Hello and welcome to a brief introduction to Whirligig uh, from first installation to, uh, to looking through the UI system and loading up a video and the general control systems. So uh, it's been installed, uh, it's available on Steam and also Oculus Store and Vive Port and if I run it this is uh, the paid for version. So it will start up. And uh, I'm currently uh, looking at this on the Oculus. So, uh, so, and I'll also be looking at the Oculus Touch controllers as well. Uh, Whirligig is uh, usable uh, in multiple uh, type, uh, types of inputs. So, as you can see here, I've got the mouse moving around here at the moment. Um, if I let the mouse go after a few seconds, it will link to the headset like so. So that's now linked to the headset. Uh, we also have the uh, Oculus Touch controllers, which I'll demonstrate in a second. So this is the opening screen. So if I look to the left, it's just a quick look over the UI that we've got there. We look to the right and there's, uh, there's, oh, there's nothing to the right. Um, so yes, yeah, so, there's, uh, so it's just to give you a brief understanding of how it all sort of works and also just having an open image. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to use the Oculus Touch controllers for this demonstration. Uh, as I said, they also take, uh, it also works with the Vive controllers and it will also work with uh, keyboard, mouse and also the Oculus remote control, which, uh, which works as you'd expect. So first off, I'm going to put the headset on. So now I started this uh, I centers when you first start up and I started it while it was in uh, while it was in on the table so it's currently in the wrong position so I'll just work out I'll show you how to so as you can see now we've got uh, we should have controllers in the viewport I will uh, I'm going to make it full screen you can make it full screen by pressing S F11 I'll make it full screen um, a bit easier for you to see what's going on and as you can see there We've got the two controllers here, uh, and this works as a laser pen here. Um, there are different ways of resetting. You can reset with this here, or you can hit R on the keyboard. So I'm going to hit R on the keyboard, and then that resets the set, uh, the to the main menu. So now we've got the main menu set up. Uh, the Whirly Geek is designed to work with several different projection types. Uh, the one that uh, opens up with is Barrel, often used for um, in. Uh, YouTube videos and uh, panoramic videos quite, uh, it's equi-rectangular as well, but I've called it barrel because it's what it used to be called and it fits within the box. So uh, I'm gonna load up my first video. So as you can see, we've got this uh, cursor here. Whenever it's over something that's clickable, it will turn blue. And if it isn't, it will turn red. And when it's red, if you click, it goes back. So let's first off, we can hover over that. I'll click to open it and I'm using the, uh, I'm using the uh, trigger on the front of the actual controllers. I'm going to go to up, 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 up. I'm going to a demonstration folder I've got on my machine, which is media. So I'm just uh, pointing the cursor over what I want to load and then just pressing the trigger. And now I've got the videos in here, which I'm going to load up just one, which is an uh, old film I made years ago. Uh, so now we've got a video we can watch and it's loaded up. Uh, you won't see it because this starts on black, but it is loaded up. So if I press hover over here and press um, select again, it will start playing it. Now this is a flat screen video uh, rather than a barrel. So it looks a bit weird. So, uh, so I can change that. I'm going to move this into part of the film that's actually a bit more um, colourful so you can see what's going on. It's quite a low resolution video, so that's not, that's not the player, that's the video itself. It will play HD and it will play um, uh, any, anything up to your system can actually handle. So now we've got that, I'm going to hit cinema. So that puts it into a cinema screen size thing, so as you can see there. Now I'm left handed, so I've, I've currently got, uh, I can switch it over using the controls on the actual, on the on the inside of the actual uh, controls there. So now we've got it here so we can press play and then we can watch the video. So there are several options that you can use with your video. So if I pause that there, um, we have scale, tilt, distance, stretch, um, and something just to make it a bit easier. Uh, 
to see because uh, it's a little hard when it's on black you can't quite see what's behind it I'm going to change the background so there's an option down here called themes so if we go onto that and open that we have a selection of themes which are uh, there's a few pages there's three pages you can also add your own themes but I'm going to select just a cloudy background here so and then as you can see when it's off and I hit there on off it will actually go back to its previous menu so now we've got a theme here this just make it easier for us to see what's going on as well so as you see we've got several options here so we've got scale so this will change the scale of the actual video so that's not moving backwards and forwards that's actually changing the scale so that's at the same distance but backwards and forwards we've got distance here and that will move it closer and further away based on the distance and this is in meters so that's uh, in a virtual 20 meters away um, if I change the scale so if I have it 17 meters away and change it to there so that looks pretty good for the demonstration um, if this is this automatically sets for the aspect ratio but so zero is the aspect ratio it's taken from the video and if it doesn't look right so if the video has got an incorrect aspect ratio you can stretch it through this one here and then if if and tilt which allows you to tilt it up and down like so that will also tilt the background if you don't want to tilt the background if I go to backgrounds and turn off lock to tilt then when it goes up and down it won't it will lock the tilt a little jittery there but it, it's it works once it's released so there you go I'm going to change the lock to tilt off again. So you can see that it's up there now. So maybe I've screwed around with all the settings. It doesn't make any sense. Those are the stretches and minus. And uh, this is tilt is up there. And that's scale is scale is like there or something. It's like that. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know where it is. We can reset all these options at the end here. So click on all of those. It will reset it. There we go. And it's set back to something that's normally visible within front of you. So those those are just default settings and they'll work with pretty much all of the different options. So that's the general play. So we can play that now and we can watch the film as we like. Um, if it's a stereo film, we've got a depth controller here. So here at the moment it's showing mono. And we can change that to stereo, uh, over, under. So we've got mono, side by side stereo, over under stereo, and back to mono. Um, in fact, I'll go through the menu options here just as a quick demonstration. We've got adjust, allows you to change the saturation, brightness, contrast, and gamma. And these are all just accessible via using the uh, clicking, the select, and just dragging them back. And again, we have the reset to set it back to standard. If we go We've got the themes, which we've already looked at. Reset, which will reset, which will set it to the center. We've got save here, which I'll go to in a second. Inputs, which I'll also go into in a second. Presets as well, and quit. So quit or quit out of it. So let's start off with save. So I'm currently watching this film. I want to pause this film uh, and go back to it. So I've paused it. I want to go back to it later. So if I hit there, I've got all these options here and I can just save them into a slot. So if I save that, save, and then that's saved it there, and then that's uh, at three minutes 50, and that's the date I've saved it. And then when I hover off one of the boxes and press there, it goes back to the main setting. So like so. So then I can load that up back up again simply by going through that menu. So let's load another film just to, oh, that's set, oh, set, uh, yeah, settings, I didn't demonstrate. These are lots of other settings within the player, um, which I'm not going to go into here because it's an instruction. So let's load up a different video. So I'm going to load up um, Vortex by Aaron Bradbury. Now Vortex is a, uh, is a fisheye uh, film and it's a, it's a stereo fisheye. So if I want that, and it's also 180, I know it to be 180. Uh, so if I hit fisheye, that changes it to fisheye. So as you can see there, 
it's a fish eye. Uh, I know it to be side by side, so I change it to side by side. So that's now side by side. And if uh, if you're looking uh, in the same way that I'm looking, I can now see that within it as stereo image. You won't be able to see that, but I, I can see that. Uh, and I know that the tilt is is about minus 35 degrees. Now I can change it a little bit by bit by so or like so. Um, but that's about it. So that's I can press play now. So that's um, that's playing away. So I'm going to save that. And now that's saved. I can watch it as before, or I can reload the other one, and it will reload all those original settings. So that video has got its own settings, and all those settings are there already pre-saved. And then every save has its own settings. So if I load this back up again, so now we're back into Fisheye, uh, back into its original menu, and we can watch that. Now, say for instance, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to save the presets so I've now got something which is uh, for a fisheye side by side uh, with these settings here and I want to use this on multiple videos I can save a preset so if I click on preset click on preset save then I've saved those settings you can see there's a kind of a brief demonstration it saves all the settings but these are the main ones um, so I can now load up that with any video so if I go to a another video so if I click on there go to another video let me see what I can probably load Ooh, um, let's go for a reason so this is a fine art film that I did again ages ago uh, I didn't want to use any copyright material so you have to deal with uh, deal with all of my own videos and errands um, so we've got that there so that's it's actually already in fisheye so because it takes the settings to the last video so if uh, I've got a preset for for that already haven't I so uh, got a preset for that already so I don't want to use that preset but what I can do is if I load up one so that's set up as that it was set up as a default wasn't it um, go to presets save so i've got saved settings for preset two so preset one preset two cinema i go off load that video back up again get a presets load load cinema load there we go um so that's the presets menu uh, we've got one last menu which is devices so we go on here there's different inputs you can use uh, so we've got uh, the gamepad uh, which can use the whole uh, gamepad for your um, for your Xbox controller and also other gamepads as well but currently I'm, I'm using the default image for the Xbox controller so it makes it pretty obvious uh, and you can change all the settings for all these different keys so the here the actual cross pad is up down left right that's the standard and it will stay the same with all that everything else is changeable so you've got all these set in there I haven't changed these ones but you can just tap on there go down the actual menu and pick any one of these controls and set them set them up however you like so if I go to touch touch again just these two controllers are set up so I want to change those so I can change them from there, change them from there, and again all these different ones. And also, uh, with the um, with the Oculus Touch, I can change these as well. So I can have different controllers, and they will they will stay the same for each one. So let me have a quick look. Uh, I've got five controllers. The same with the Vive controllers. All of them are all set up however you want to set them up as the original and keyboard there's a whole selection of keyboard settings here so you've got default and then we can clear all and set our own uh, so these in red are ones that you can't change but everything else you can change you can remove by simply selecting there or or not once you finish with that then you can close that and then it will start you'll be able to carry on using the player
And that's the, uh, the overall um, usage of Whirligig. Uh, there's a few other, there's loads of other features, but that's just an introduction. Uh, very quickly, brief, uh, briefly, uh, so we do have ability to view images. So we go to, uh, let me see, almost as well. So the image there. And again, it will work in the same way as a video, but without the um, time bar. Uh, we can also to I think that's just a yeah. Um, we can um, go to settings. We can change the video path. So at the moment, it's media foundation. If you've got Windows Seven, it will automatically go to video LAN. And there's direct show. So if if your video doesn't work with one of these, it can work with one of the other ones. Uh, often will work with one of the other ones. So um, so if you have any problems with running a video and it fails, then try one of the other uh, the other three options. And uh, I think that will be the end of this demonstration. I hope you enjoy uh, enjoy using Whirly Gig. Uh, I am constantly updating it and trying to improve usability each time. And uh, if you find any issues, please let me know and I'll do my best to fix them. And if you have any suggestions for improving it, uh, adding new features, also let me know and I can add it to the list and I'll, I'll try and add them in, in up and coming versions. So uh, thank you very much and uh, I look forward to hearing your comments and I uh, hope you enjoy your purchase. Thank you.